hundred years ago, there was something very important that we do not have today. The answer is simple, but not obvious. It's privacy. A hundred years ago, if you wanted to stay private, you could. Today, even the word privacy is stopping to exist. No way, right? There must be a way to stay private. Who can know so much about you? Everyone. For example, Google knows more about you than even you do. Really, look at all the things they track. Even if you turn off all the settings, even if you stop using Google and throw away all of your electronic devices, you still cannot escape. For example, Facebook collects data for people that don't even have an account. If you say that, for example, your sister really likes ice cream, don't worry. Facebook already has an information file for your sister, and they will definitely write that down. This is the dark future. However, there are some interesting cases, like the case with Edward Snowden. Some of you might know him. He worked in the US national security, and one day he suddenly took a vacation and moved to Hong Kong. That is where he started a secret message chain with journalists from The Guardian. He stole 1,700,000 secret files and told the whole world that the US government was actually spying on everyone living in America. From that arose a massive scandal, and the top spies from the whole world tried to find him. However, after three weeks, he managed to escape to Russia, which gave him political asylum. How did he do that? He used phones only for one use, all the best VPNs, did not go outside and obviously blocked all the cameras. To do that, first you need to throw away all the devices you ever used. Even while turned completely off, phones gather data like your location and many other things. If you're communicating, it is best to use code. Never use cards, only cash. Try to look exactly like a normal person. You cannot always know where there are cameras outside, so you can only move at night. And always with a cap that emits lights, like LEDs. Look how well it works. These days, even chaotic makeup won't save you from the facial recognition features in the cameras. Even radical methods, like changing your sex, don't always help. For example, Giovanni Reboledo, a Colombian gangster who completely changed his looks to become a woman, was found and caught in May of 2013, although he looked completely different. However, Snowden, on the other hand, escaped successfully. But give it 20 years, and that will never happen again. Technology is getting better, and soon no one will have access to privacy. Imagine you are a prisoner. However, you do not know when you are spectated. Maybe right now, maybe not. There is no way to be sure. That is why you will always try your best to control yourself and follow the rules. Maybe someone is watching. Interesting idea, right? However, you, you, yes, exactly, right now, you are the prisoner. Jeremy Bentham was a thinker that lived in the 18th century. Actually, he is most famous for his body being made into a doll after he died. Really, look. His head was stolen, found, and so on, until they changed it to a wax one. Before coronavirus, he was in the University of California, which he founded, in the corridor so that everyone could look at his body. However, why did I even start talking about this person? He was the one that knew how to control all the prisoners. It was his idea to make it so that the prisoner would not know when he is being watched. Look, this is Presidio Modelo in Cuba, a model prison. Here, in the center, the guards would watch over the prisoners, but the windows were so small that the prisoners had no way to see who the guards were spectating. Kind of like in a medieval castle. Your arrows will always go through the windows, while the enemy doesn't even know where you are. Prisoners, when facing such a situation, always behave, since there is always a chance that they are being watched. That is called a panopticon, where you might be watched at any moment. You can cover your laptop camera, but you can't cover all the cameras. However, the system of Panopticon is not fundamentally a bad one. In Russia, where Dodo Pizza was founded, they have cameras in every restaurant. The cameras show the work of the people making the pizza, so that at any point the employees are trying their best. What if someone is spectating? This makes them much more productive and increases the quality of the pizza. The story is double-sided. On one hand, the idea of the panopticon is, in some cases, very useful, like inside a prison, but it does take away our privacy. However, we need to introduce a very important character to the story to change it around. The government. 
In today's world, we are getting watched on every second. Some cases, though, are actually very interesting. Many of you probably know that during lockdown in China, there were drones that would tell people to go home and follow the rules of quarantine. However, here is an improvement. Fake Chinese pigeons. Really, look at it fly. There is no way you would be able to find out it was not real if you didn't know. It can gather data of you and you will never know if you are getting spectated. There are thousands of cameras outside, especially in large cities, and the government knows who you are and where you are. The government slowly moved towards higher surveillance. For example, after the World Trade Center attacks in 2001, the government gained the right to watch people miles more than they were able to before. Big tech companies though, like Google, are winning the data race. They know much more about you, however, the government needs that knowledge. There is no way to check any affiliation between Google and the government. And although Google does state that they do not sell your data, that is hard to believe. Why would the government need your data? The answer is simple. The more you know, the more powerful you are. That may sound like a phrase from a children's book, but that is not the case. For example, your PE teacher knows more about physical education than you do. That is why they have power over what you're doing during physical education. If the governments lose knowledge, they lose power. Interestingly, it is not as important to control everyone. We just put people inside a panopticon so that they don't know when they are being watched. They are, therefore, they will always try their best to follow the laws. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The true data that the governments are trying to find is inside. Imagine you being forced to wear a bracelet that monitors your pulse, your pressure and so on to determine your emotions 24-7. The government would know when you are laughing, when you are crying and when you are scared. Why is that such a big issue? Already today in our world, personalized ads are a problem. However, if the government would get access to your emotions, the ads would be so personalized that you would buy anything. And we would be very lucky if it would be an ad of the new laptop and not a political campaign. However, again, anything can be used for good things as well as bad things. If everyone was forced to wear a bracelet, if the government knew what you were thinking, the crime rates would drop drastically. Police wouldn't stop a crime, they would just prevent it. All those cameras with facial recognition outside, they take away your privacy, but in turn they give you security. Who would commit a crime right in front of a camera? Even if the world is a prison and we are the prisoners, at least we are safe. However, another twist. Is it truly just to punish for thought? Punishing for thought would be tyranny and oppression. Everyone would be criminals. Life would be impossible. There are so many different sides to this argument. But in the end, it is everybody's choice. It is your choice. Will you pick privacy? Or will you pick security?